Coming up on today's Airborne, Mooney Aircraft may indeed be back. Huerta is urged to reopen the FAA registry. And Diamond Aircraft adds new roles for the DA-42 platform. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, I'm back from my two-week hiatus. I had a wonderful wedding and a great couple of weeks in Italy, but I'm happy to be back hosting Airborne. In our first story today, we have some pretty exciting news. And we're all wondering, can it really be true? The deal isn't done until the first airplane rolls off the production line, but the word we are getting is that Mooney Aircraft will restart airplane manufacturing at the beginning of January of 2014 at its headquarters in Careville, Texas. New funding from the Soaring America Corporation, a California-based company, will provide the necessary capital to relaunch and sustain the legendary brand. The plan is to place the acclaimed Type S and the Ovation series back into production. Mooney tells us to expect announcements in the near future about the technological advances that will accompany the reintroduction of these models. Mooney said they expect to bring back some of their previous employees and are confident they will attract new talent as they re-enter the marketplace. It's been 80 years since Al Mooney started his company, and we're glad to hear this product line is about to return. We wish them well. A new Diamond DA-42 Geostar has successfully collected laser scanning and photogrammetry data during one single flight. In plain English, this means a very odd-looking plane combined with amazing technology can perform spectacular earth mapping. The team of Diamond Airborne Sensing succeeded in perfect sensor integration on the DA-42 MPP. The Geostar is able to complete 10-hour survey flights with a range of up to 1,042 nautical miles. At an altitude of 10,000 feet, it can collect data from areas as large as 1,300 square miles. The photogrammetric camera is installed in a special pod on the aircraft's nose, while the laser scanner is mounted on the belly of the aircraft. By combining the data from these two sources, a realistic 3D model of the object is produced. Diamond says the Geostar is particularly suited for surveying cities, land areas, critical infrastructures such as pipelines, glaciers, or snowfields, and also for mapping damages caused by natural disasters. Some members of the U.S. Senate are calling on FAA Administrator Michael Huerta to reopen the Aircraft Registry Office closed by the partial government shutdown. Tom Patton explains. A bipartisan group of U.S. Senators has sent a letter to FAA Administrator Michael Huerta imploring him to review the agency's determination that the FAA Aircraft Registry Office is, quote, non-essential under government shutdown guidelines. The partial shutdown of the federal government led to the closure of the registry, all but halting the sale, purchase, export, or import of aircraft in the U.S. The senator said in the letter, dated October 9th, that, quote, the closure of the aircraft registry office has a serious impact on American aircraft manufacturers and related industries because it prevents the delivery of newly manufactured aircraft, end quote. Safety and international obligations are also affected, the letter said. The senator said the FAA appears to be handling the current partial shutdown differently than it has in the past, quote, inflicting unnecessary hardship on aviation industries in the country. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The Flight Design 25th Anniversary Jubilee Edition of their CTLSI, offered earlier this year, sold out so fast that according to Flight Design, some buyers were left standing in line when the limited production ran dry. We should all have such problems. To meet the reported continuing demand for the special deal, Flight Design USA worked with a German manufacturer to create 25 specially equipped CTLSI aircraft called the America's Edition. The America's Edition CTLSI models will be delivered in 2014 with special America's Edition exterior graphics. The Rotax fuel-injected 912 IS engine, a dual Dynon 10-inch Skyview glass screen EFIS with synthetic vision, a Garmin 796 multifunction display, a Dynon autopilot, two Bose A20 ANR headsets, 
a BRS emergency airframe parachute system, the Garmin GTR-225 comm radio, and Wellin high-intensity landing lights. ADS-B is optional. Redbird Flight Simulations CEO Todd Willinger announced that ex-AOPA president Craig Fuller is the new chairman of the board at Redbird, and the company's founder, Jerry Gregoire, will now be able to increase his focus on expansion strategies, research, and new product development. Fuller said that no single individual has done more innovative work introducing people to aviation and keeping them flying using simulation than Jerry Gregoire. Fuller said, quote, I can't wait to see what Redbird comes up with next. The opportunity to join the leadership team to build on Redbird's remarkable success while charting a course for the future is a real privilege, end quote. Gregoire says he'll remain actively involved in day-to-day -day operations and the board, even though the title on his door will change. As Gregoire pilots his airplane regularly on Redbird business, he'll receive the title of chief pilot. Gregoire said, quote, Honestly, that's the job I've wanted all along. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment when we come back. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, you can drop us an email anytime to news-spy at aero-news.net. The first production AW-189 twin-engine helicopter performed its maiden flight at Variegate Plant in Italy last Thursday. The aircraft is expected to be delivered to Bristow Helicopters Limited by the end of the year to carry out offshore transport missions in the North Sea, with operational readiness planned in early 2014. Two pre-production helicopters have been devoted to the development of offshore and search and rescue configurations and mission kits. This will allow making basic mission kits immediately certified and available to customers once the aircrafts are delivered, reducing the time for customers to get crew and aircraft operationally ready. Augusta Westland said that many orders by a number of major customers are already logged to date and they're confident that this will be just the first of hundreds of AW-189s to be delivered in the coming years. Japan Airlines' recent decision to spend over $9 billion on Airbus A350 XWB airplanes rather than Boeing's planned 777X has rattled Boeing to the point that it now plans to restructure its strategy and marketing functions. An internal memo from Boeing Commercial Airplanes Chief Executive Ray Connor leaked to the media indicates that the action is directly tied to JLA's decision to go with Boeing's competitor. The marketing functions will shift to a sales group led by Marketing Vice President Randy Tenseth, who would report to Global Sales Chief John Wojcik. Strategy and business development will now fall under a finance group headed by Kevin Shim who will become Chief of Finance and Strategy. Reuters said Boeing confirmed the validity of the memo, but would not make further comment. Bombardier will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the iconic Learjet aircraft, while showcasing its business jet product portfolio at this year's 66th annual MBAA conference and exhibition in Las Vegas, Nevada next week. Bombardier will present its lineup of business jets including the Learjet 75, Challenger 300, Challenger 605, and Global 6000 jets, alongside the Learjet 23 aircraft, 
the first of the Learjet aircraft. Corporate travel was changed forever when Bill Lear introduced the namesake corporate jet. And Bombardier has recently expanded its worldwide support network to kick off the next 50 years with the Learjet 70, Learjet 75, and Learjet 85 aircraft. We're glad to see that Bombardier is remembering and honoring the early Learjet and what it meant to the history of personal business travel. The Marine Corps Frog made its final flight. The frog we're talking about is spelled P-H-R-O-G and is the nickname for the venerable CH-46E Sea Knight helicopter that's proudly served the Marines since the Vietnam War. Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron 262 made their final CH-46 flight from Marine Corps Air Station in Futama, Japan on September 30th. The frogs were retired to make way for the MV-22B Osprey as part of a one-for-one -one replacement. Lance Corporal Ranieri A. Ratelli, a CH-46E air crew chief with VMM-262, said, quote, Marines from all over Okinawa are coming to say their last goodbyes and have been coming out to get one last touch on it before it's laid to rest. Captain Luke A. Williamson, a CH-46E pilot with VMM-262, said, quote, I've been flying the CH-46E for a few years now and loving it, but it's a piece of machinery and it's really about the people and the Marines, not the machines they work on. Williams added, even though the frog is going away, the Marines don't change. Well, it's good to see that the Marines can still kick butt and be sentimental. Gotta love them. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Today's AVW is all about altitude. On Monday, October 7th, the SpaceX Grasshopper completed its highest leap to date, rising to 744 meter altitude. The view from above is taken from a single camera hexacopter, getting closer to the stage than in any previous flight. Find the 1 minute 37 second video on YouTube by searching Grasshopper 744 meter test. We've all heard the old adage, don't despair, if you're handed a lemon, just turn it into lemonade. Okay, well here's a new twist, just turn it into jet fuel. Dr. Claudia Bickers, a University of Queensland researcher, is modifying Baker's yeast to produce a synthetic form of the natural chemical limonene. Dr. Vickers says that limonene is a volatile chemical that is best known for contributing to the smell of citrus fruits and was first identified in turpentine oil in the late 1800s. It's now used as a flavor and fragrance in foods, household cleaning products, and perfumes. Dr. Vickers says that the environmental benefits of using limonene as a fuel were particularly exciting. She said, quote, It might sound unlikely, but limonene could one day be a renewable clean source of aviation fuel. End quote. According to the report, a lot of research is still needed to make it work. And we doubt you'll see jet fuel lemonade being sold at front yard lemonade stands in the near future. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. And please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.